Hi, I'm Rev Myron. I'm a minister through Pathways of Life, and I've been a Course in Miracles student for 40 years. Uh, this year, I'm going through the lessons. I'm asking uh, Jesus to clarify for me, and then I'm writing from that clarity, and that's what I'm sharing with you today. So let's get started. Today, I'm looking at lesson 130. And this is uh, the third of uh, these three lessons, which are related. The, um, the first one was lesson 128, which says, the world I see holds nothing that I want. And then lesson 129 says, beyond this world, there is a world I want. And now today, the focus is on how it is impossible to see two worlds. Paragraph one, perception is consistent. What you see reflects your thinking and your thinking but reflects your choice of what you want to see. Your values are determiners of this. For what you value, you must want to see. Believing what you see is really there. No one can see a world his mind has not accorded value and no one can fail to look upon what he believes he wants. This paragraph is describing to us how we came to see this world. It begins with a desire to see something that is valued. For instance, I mentioned the situation in which I seem to have been a victim. The only way that could occur is if I first desired the experience of being a victim, and I could only have desired that if I found value in it. The value is obvious to me. The ego mind thinks that seeing myself as a victim is a way to offload some guilt onto the perceived victimizer. Once the valued experience is desired, it is projected outward. Then it is seen as if it is not um, a thought in the mind at all, but the world acting on the thinker. This process is described even more clearly in lesson 325. Jesus is making an uncompromising statement here when he tells us this. No one can see a world his mind has not accorded value and no one can fail to look upon what he believes he wants. I very much appreciate these uncompromising statements in the course. It makes it very simple. Whatever I'm seeing in the world or experiencing in the world comes from what I value and I cannot fail to see what I value. So well, while I may surprise myself that I still value ideas that cause me distress, I never deny that I am the cause. That means I always know that I am the solution as well. So paragraph two, yet who can really hate and love at once? Who can desire what he does not want to have reality? And who can choose to see a world of which he is afraid? Fear must make blind for this is it, its weapon is. That which you fear to see, you cannot see. Love and perception, this goes hand in hand, but fear obscures the dark in darkness what is there. Three, what then can fear project upon the world? What can be seen in darkness that is real? Truth is eclipsed by fear and what remains is but imagined. Yet what can be real in blind imaginings of panic born? What would you want that is shown to you? What would you wish to keep in such a dream? It would seem that I love being a victim and yet hate being a victim. And clearly this is not possible that both are true. I can love the idea of victimhood because I see value in it as a way to rid myself of guilt. But I also make a different choice in which I choose a right mind and realize that what I thought had value had none. My experience of victimhood shows me that it doesn't help and that guilt remains. And so I no longer value it. As Jesus is telling us, we cannot both love and hate at the same time. We're always going to choose one or the other. He also shows us that fear blinds us to what is there. 
I'm going to use the story of the worker who did a poor job the other day. Or I could use the story of the plumber earlier this year who did a poor job. You probably notice a pattern here. I did. The only thing that happened is these two men did a poor job. My feeling of being a victim was not necessary. It was a choice I made for the purpose of ridding myself of guilt. The reason I want to be rid of guilt is because it scares me to think of the guilt. And fear is the same reason I hid the desire from myself. What you fear to see, you cannot see. Because I desire reality more than I desire to hide from reality, I do this work. I've come to understand that I have the belief in guilt in my mind and that in my fear, I hid a lot of the guilt from myself. But I also know that I'm ready to be free. And so I watch for signs that indicate a belief in guilt. Then I look at the guilt with the Holy Spirit until it disappears. I do this as often as it takes until I have changed my mind. Paragraph four, fear has made everything you think you see, all separation, all distinctions, and the multitude of differences you believe make up the world. They are not there. Love's enemy has made them up, yet love can have no enemy. And so they have no cause, no being, and no consequence. They can be valued, but remain unreal. They can be sought, but they cannot be found. Today, we will not seek for them, nor waste this day in seeking what cannot be found. So the world we see as a reflection of our guilt. The fear of our imagined guilt is the cause of the world. Fear can make illusions, but it cannot make anything real because it is itself unreal. May we none of us waste another moment of our time seeking what is not real. Paragraph five, it is impossible to see two worlds which have no overlap of any kind. Seek for the one, the other disappears, but one remains. They are the range of choice beyond which your decision cannot go. The real and the unreal are all there are to choose between and nothing more than these. Today, we'll, we will attempt no compromise where none is possible. The world you see is proof you have already made a choice as all embracing as its opposite. What we would learn today is more than just a lesson that you cannot see two worlds. It also teaches you the one you see is quite consistent from the point of view from which you see it. It is all a piece because it stems from one emotion and reflects its source in everything you see. We will always see what we choose to see. It will be a choice between the made up world that reflects ego's thought system or the real world. There are no other choices. Each world is consistent from the point of view from which you see it. The world we see ourselves in right now is probably the made up world. It is consistent and that it always reflects fear. Even when it's pleasant or beautiful, it is unstable and destined to end. So there will always be an element of fear. The real world based on reality will reflect what is real, which is love. It too is consistent and only expresses love. May our time be used to consistently choose the real world. Paragraph seven, six times today in thanks and gratitude, we gladly give five minutes to the thought that ends all compromise and doubt and go beyond them all as one. We will not make a thousand meaningless distinctions, nor attempt to bring with us a little part of unreality as we devote our minds to finding only what is real. Eight, begin your searching for the other world by asking for a strength beyond your own and recognizing what it is you seek. You do not want illusions. And you come to these five minutes emptying your hands of all the petty treasures of this world. 
you wait for God to help you, as you say. It is impossible to see two worlds. Let me accept the strength God offers me and see no value in this world that I may find my freedom and deliverance. The sentence that stood out to me in these instructions is this one. We will not make a thousand meaningless distinctions nor attempt to bring with us a little part of unreality as we devote our minds to finding only what is real. I choose not to analyze or question the meaningless, nor will I choose to attempt or attempt to choose both reality and delusion, a little of one and a little of another. <laughs> I see clarity, not more confusion. Paragraph nine, God will be there. For you have called upon the great unfailing power, which will take this giant step with you in gratitude. Nor will you fail to see his thanks expressed in tangible perception and in truth. You will not doubt what you will look upon, for though it is perception, it is not the kind of seeing that your eyes alone have ever seen before. And you will know God's strength upheld you as you made this choice. What a powerful paragraph this is. As we go into the silence, God will be there. Jesus calls this a giant step as we decide that we choose only the real world. He says that the great unfailing power is taking the step with us, and we will have a tangible expression of God's thanks. When I do this, I feel a deep sense of peace, even if only if I spend maybe only a minute or two with it. This peace follows me into the world and remains with me for a while. In this, I know that God's strength upheld me. Paragraph 10. Dismiss temptation easily today whenever it arises, merely by remembering the limits of your choice. The unreal or the real, the false or the true is what you see and only what you see. Perception is consistent with your choice and hell or heaven comes to you as one. 11, I accept a little part of hell as real and you have damned your eyes and cursed your sight. And what you will behold is hell indeed. Yet the release of heaven still remains within your range of choice to take the place of everything that hell would show to you. All you need say to any part of hell, whatever form it takes, is simply this. It is impossible to see two worlds. I seek my freedom and deliverance, and this is not part of what I want. Understand stand that I cannot have heaven if I choose a little bit of hell as well. I have someone dear to me who seems to be depressed. The ego mind wants to dwell on this and worry about it. It suggests things I could do to help. When I listen to that voice, I'm not at peace. It's as simple as that. I cannot entertain fear in any form and be at peace. Each time these thoughts enter my mind, I pause long enough to silence the mind and invite the Holy Spirit to look with me. The more often I do this, the more intense the feeling of peace and the more quickly it comes. Thank you so much for joining me in this lesson and thank you for watching my video. If you found it helpful, then please like it. And if you haven't yet, subscribe. And I'll be back tomorrow with another lesson.